27th, 2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. In my usual slot on Tuesday, of course, that means the usual slot for Dwayne Long as well. Dwayne, it's a fine, crisp, almost spring-like morning here in the Gem City. How about the capital city of Columbus? Looks just like that. Beautiful, blue sky. Don't be a good day. It has been blue skies on the recruiting front for quite some time, basically since Herb got here. And I try and transition into the news of the day. The number one running back in the United States of America, Zamir White, the North Carolina phenom, will commit this afternoon. For a long time, I thought the Buckeyes had a good shot. He will not commit to Ohio State this afternoon. He's going to pick Georgia. Obviously, Ohio State got a commitment from Brian Sneed a long time ago. But the recent commitment of Master Teague following a visit probably sealed the fate for the running back position. Now that we know for a fact, or when I put fact in air quotes, that White is going elsewhere, what's your feeling on the whole situation as it's broken down? I, I think that, uh, you know, we got we got a couple of good guys. I'm a big fan of Sneed, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, uh, senior film of Teague. As, you know, I've, I've mentioned this before. I his junior film didn't have me convinced, and obviously it didn't have the Buckeyes convinced because they didn't offer him until they got him up here. He's a notorious hard worker. He uh, he showed him in uh, in person that he, he's become a better player. So I'm looking forward to seeing his his uh, senior film. Looks like uh, this is a guy that's worked hard and gotten better. Uh, as far as White's concerned, you know this. This was always, it just never went away, this thing that his mother wants to keep him closer to home. Yep. And, uh, I, you know, for the longest time, it seemed like Clemson was going to get him. Uh, and, you know, I'm surprised she's letting him get as far away as Georgia. So, uh, you know, I'm not actually shocked at that. Uh, you know, we, we got two good backs coming in, it looks like. And, uh, you know, just I wish him well. I just wish he could cut the apron strings and do what he wants to. Uh, you know, <clears throat> and taking uh, taking three based on what we have, Dan. We don't have three backs right now. Antonio Williams is not showing that he can play here. Hasn't shown it yet. Not at all. He's going to have to have gotten a lot better, a lot better uh, to be. I don't. I don't see him as being part of the program. Uh, next year, so we've got two. We've got a couple of guys who can play there. Maybe not their ideal position. Uh, so I, I wouldn't have been opposed to taking three backs. Three backs would be fine. I don't think at Ohio State the third back you're going to get is going to be of the quality needed based on the egos of recruits. But I hear you. Um, I was concerned about Master Teague as well, but Bill Curlick was at that workout. He saw him. He, um, he passed the eye test. And here's another thing. Kids grow. Kids get bigger and stronger and faster. You're not a finished product as a junior in high school. So Master Teague could end up being the best one of the group, very possibly. Brian Sneed, uh, I love everything I've seen from him. Uh, do they look on film as good as Zamir White? They do not. Um, that's just a fact. Uh, Georgia has not recruited well on the whole for the past few years. They have done well at running back. That's probably the one position they can go and say we have the lineage here. So more power to him. I'm glad he's not in the Big Ten. However, speaking of running back, sometimes you happen upon a storyline that that you weren't totally clued in on. And I will say uh, I posted Jonah uh, J. Books outside Columbus this past weekend. The headline was, Ken Weber outdo Barkley. And it turned into a referendum on Mike Weber, um, Mike Weber versus Saquon Barkley, as referred to in the title of the, of, the, of the piece. Now, the intention of the headline was not to say that Weber was better than Saquon Barkley, but just that he might statistically be, out to out, be able to outdo him. But as the front row will do, it kind of took on a, a life of its own. So as I look at the team, and Dwayne, talk, Dwayne and I talked a, a little bit about this before the show, 
I know JT Barrett is in the Bucknutters crosshairs, but I get the sense the number two guy in the crosshairs is Mike Weber. People just don't seem that sold on him. He had a great freshman year relative to, you know, the country. He's the third leading freshman um, rusher. The other two guys, Justice Hill and Tyrone Owens, come from Oklahoma State and New Mexico, kind of gimmick offenses. He had a decent season. Um, now, he did not outrush Barkley. Barkley's the leading return sophomore running back um, rusher. He actually rushed for fewer yards than Lamar Jackson, believe it or not. What's your sense on Weber? Why? I mean, to be fair, Dwayne, Weber hasn't always been at the top of the Dwayne Long depth chart. What do you get the sense of from the fans <laughs> that – Weber just isn't up to snuff so far. Well, I think that uh, that following Ezekiel Elliott is part of the problem. He's coming in behind one of the great backs in the in the history of, of Buckeye football, and that's a deep and talented group right there. And to interrupt and, you for one sec here. To interrupt you for one sec. The NFL Top 100 just came out, and who knows how accurate that is. But Zeke was seventh overall and the number one running back in the NFL in his first year. So for some context, that yeah, and, and see that's the thing. He's this is one of the greats ever, uh, and right now the number one running back in the NFL after one season, after a rookie year, he's the best running back on the planet, and you're seeing that comparison, and uh, you know. He's he's just a really good running back. Mike Weber's a good running back. He's just not special. Every time Zeke touched the ball, you knew something could happen. You could see him running down the field by himself. Any time he touched the ball, I don't care if it was up the middle, if it was wide, if he threw him the ball, he could make something happen every time he touched it. And I think that, that fans are, are just kind of missing that. He's just a really good running back. He's just not the special guy, and that's what that's what fans are looking for. I think that's it's it's not specifically Mike Weber. It's we want to be better at running back. We want to we don't want to be good. We want to be great, and that's what's missing. He's he's just a good running back, and uh, you know maybe he's going to be a very good running back. He's he's highly effective running back. So uh, that's what we have right now. And fans are just not satisfied with that. There was a report that uh, Weber ran a four three five forty. Instead of people being excited about that, I think most people found more questioning the uh, the timing system. Does he look like a four three five guy to you on on uh, when you watch him play? Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't show that kind of speed on the football field. He may show it on. Uh, in a t-shirt and shorts, but uh, no, he he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, he's fast. He's plenty fast, but he's not a four three five guy. I don't believe that. I, I don't know how four, you three. can believe that based on what you've seen. I think two backs went under four three five at uh, the combine officially. If you even consider them two people, now that I think about it. And it was Ross and Curtis Samuel, John Ross and Curtis Samuel. There may have been a few more, but that lets you know. Four three five legit, you are fast enough to run on America's four by one hundred team, just so you know. That is absolutely out otherworldly speed. Now, I don't take the number into account, but if they say he was the fourth fastest person on the team and it's a relative number, I think that's that's valuable. Do you see the fans being tougher on because we talked about this. I don't think the defense is going to have any question marks this season. I think the defensive line is going to be so dominant. The trickle-down effect is going to make them um, just almost beyond questioning. We used to question, um, you know, the Beck Warner brain trust up in the booth. Well, they're gone. Now you got Kevin Wilson. He's going to be in the honeymoon phase. I, I can see the fans, get, see us, us Bucknutters getting on, on Weber and Barrett as the two guys who are kind of in the crosshairs here. Would you agree with that? Oh, uh, yeah. They're going to have to – they're definitely going to have to perform and see that. With, with Barrett, the one thing that I said is let's, you know, forget about the speculation. Let's look at what the reality is. What do we know? What we know is 
when Herman was running this offense, J.T. Barrett was breaking records throwing the football. He was in the Heisman. I think he was fifth in the Heisman voting. Okay, what happened? And let's let's just be honest. He has not been the same quarterback. I think he's been better than Buckeye fans are giving him credit for. He's had some bad games. Uh, but what has changed? And that was uh, Tom Herman left, and we were left with a couple of guys that Urban Meyer decided, you're not getting it done. you got to go. Tim Beck, Beck was never, I'll never understand the hire. I remember when, when he came in, the Nebraska fans were laughing. They were laughing. They could not believe we were bringing this guy in as our quarterback coach, and he was going to be part of the offensive brain trust. And it, and it showed. I will always believe that's it. Now, J.T. Barrett can make a liar out of me, and, and you know, he just had one great year. It's going to, you know, based on what he does this year. But I believe that with proper uh, coaching and an offense that makes sense, because the play calling was, come on, man. I, I, I say it, we didn't have a playbook, we had a play post-it note. It was the same stuff over and over again. And we've had people come on the boarding house, people who are inside the game, and they say the same thing. The the, the play calling was just not good. So you know, we were so predictable. And, you know, you give a defensive coordinator that's good enough to coach at this level, he doesn't even need to know – he doesn't need to know what play you're running. All he needs to know is if you're running or passing, and he'll shut you down. And it was easy to see what we were going to do. So I'm saying that with Barrett, we need to – he's going to be better coached this year. He's going to have better preparation. Let's see what happens this year. We, you know, I'm saying I've got more faith that J.T. Barrett can return to the J.T. Barrett that was fifth in the Heisman voting as a redshirt freshman than I am Michael Weber suddenly going to be a lot better. I think that if the passing offense is better, Mike Weber is going to have more room to run. If the safeties aren't sitting in the box or taking their first steps forward, I think he's going to have more room, and he will get more yardage. He'll look better. But it starts with Barrett being the Barrett that he can be. And I just think he will be with these new coaches. I agree completely. I cannot get out of my mind the performance he put on in 2014 at Michigan State. I encourage everyone to go to YouTube and go back and look at some of the highlights of that game. He threw some of the most beautiful passes. There's a pass on the right sideline to Devin Smith on third and long that I think was the biggest play of the season that Either it was a lucky throw or Barrett has the talent. So when we discuss that before, we shall see. I want to finish with this. For those of you, and we were speaking about Zeke Elliott earlier, to bring it home, Zeke Elliott is in the most recent ESPN, the body issue, showing off his body. And I was wondering, Dwayne, having seen the photos, did it give you any ideas for your next naked jaunt? Well, I haven't seen the photos yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I think it's, I've always thought the, the issue is interesting. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's a little bit odd. I don't know why I would want to look at naked men. I guess I'm, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the, what the big deal is. I don't know why they do it. I know there are women in it. Uh, but I have not seen Zeke's, uh, <clears throat> pictures yet i'm sure that uh you know they could come over and take a few shots of the naked jaunt i think people would enjoy that more actually i have visions of a calendar a zeke naked jaunt combo Dwayne calendar premium users only so get your subscriptions buck nutters have a good one